Welcome to Love Them Knives channel. LTK with you. What do we got? ZT 303 or ZT 0303 model. It has been reissued and it's looking fine. It's a frame lock, titanium DLC coated here. See that? Pocket clip. Where's the rest of it? Where'd that go? That's small. In any case, you can go tip up, tip down. This is tip down position. This is the way it comes. Tip down position, tip up, which we gonna do here in a little bit when we get done with this filming. Tip up, tip down, left hand as well. With a big old I think that's three eighths uh, nut on there. I don't know. I have to. I have I have one sitting on my bench with the bit thing in it, so I can turn this around. So, cause I didn't take this one apart, but I took its brother apart. Here we go. Ken Onion Design. There's a serial number on it. Patented, made in the USA. Heavy little sucker, that's for sure. G10 on the front scale. Tiger stripe. Drop point. Hollow grind. Assisted. Opening. So, there's some springs in there. But it flies right open. These are not so much thumb studs as they are blade stops as you can kind of see, by them not really giving you much room to try and get your thumb in there. I use the flipper tab. Comes in handy. No jimping on the flipper tab, but there's a bunch of jimping around it. Big thumb ramp, lots of jimping. Lots of traction there. Little bit of a sharpening choil, which I think is probably enough to get the job done. You got some recurve in there. So, you know, if you have like the ceramic rods or something like that, that should be not a problem. If you have just a big, huge sharpening stone that goes back and forth, yeah, then you might have an issue. So, uh, you can get um, different accessories for the fixed uh, systems where you can get to a recurve and do that. Right now, mine is sharp as sharp can be. Yes, it is. And I'm gonna prove you to it. Yeah, it is. It's all that. It is sharp. I like these. I mean, you know, they, they, they were, before they reissued these, they were on eBay and, you know, secondary market because you couldn't get them anymore and people were getting, you know, 350 400 even north of 400 or asking that for them at least. So now that they're back, uh, they're only a measly $272. <laughs> Still pretty, pretty pricey, huh? But these are big old heavy duty combat things. Look at the backspacer, Black G10. You know, jumping around the backside. Lots of traction, right? Out here on the blade, like the thumb ramp, like we were talking about, and up here by the flipper tab. Um, kind of catch the back of that jumping when you do the uh, the when you deploy the blade. You know, you're kind of hitting this right here. So it's not great. It's not really creating a good landing zone. I'm not sure how useful those last two pieces of jimping there are if they would have discontinued right there. I think it would have been maybe a little bit more sensible from what I can think. But you got a lot of texture all over here. These are definitely grippy knives. Come here, buddy. 301 in ranger green 303 it's brother in black so i mean these are whew, a lot of texture 
very grippy, assisted opening, same knife, different color front scale, backside, different. You want to look at tip up? Want to look at tip down? Hey, Blackie, 1992 called. They want their tip down back. <laughs> yeah. Get up to date there, buddy. We're in a different century. In any case, <laughs> whatever. Talk about some badass twins, right? It's like, come on, man. Throw me something. Just throw me a melon or something. I'm going to cut it up. I'm going to make it look like, like hors d'oeuvres at a cocktail party <laughs> before it hits the ground. Ah, these definitely inspire a lot of uh, playfulness. Yes, they do. God forbid we get too playful with these. These are some serious cutting machines, aren't they? Yes, they are. How big is that sucker? They're like three and three quarter inch. I mean, you got this sucker that comes clear out there, but back down in here, where are we? You know, we're almost at four inches, really and truly, but up here at three and three quarters. So 96, 97 millimeter blade, overall eight and a half, little over eight and a half, which is about 21, what, 21 and a half? And not quite 22 centimeters, somewhere between 21 and a half and 22 centimeters. And how fat? How fat is fat? Okay, and 17, ooh, almost 7 tenths of an inch, 17.6 millimeters. Yikes. Yeah, that's a handful, isn't it? And we got 4 millimeter blade stock, which should be about 0.15. Extrapolate that out one more, about 0.157 of an inch. So, Fat Daddy. Fat Daddy in the hand, which is great. I mean, I like them because it's fat, and that's that. And I like it that way. Apparently, if I didn't, I'd have to lose some weight. Because, yes, me and these knives, we share something in common. Being a little wider than you need to be. But these? Yeah. They're tough daddies, aren't they? Oh, let me show you something. Okay, so you can do the Blade HQ read. You know, pause and read. G10, Tiger Stripe, 3.75, assisted opening, blah, blah, blah. 8.6 overall. S30V drop point hollow grind, blah, blah, blah. Handle thickness 0.63. Eh, it was a little heavier than that, wasn't it? On my calculation, look at that, nine ounces. Let's let's weigh that sucker out. Hold on, let me turn my scale on. I don't think it was quite nine. At least the 301 wasn't when I did that. So this is a mixed rider and Ken Onion uh, co-design. And that's cool. You know, oh, did they did they say what size the nut was? Because I'm a oh, three eighths. Okay, I'm not a liar yet. I'm working hard at it, but I ain't lied to you yet, yet. And it's the three oh three. Yes, we are. Okay, everyday carry made in the U S of A and C. If you tore it apart. That's what it'd look like, kind of, kind of, sort of, here. When you first tear the scale off, this is what it looks like. So you got this little assisted bar on both sides. Okay, so it, it hooks into here, hooks into here. There you go. You just pop that out, unhook it, like I did here. Okay. Still kind of hooked into that scale, but unhooked there. In any case, you can see the internal stop pin. And where did we stick the, where did we stick the internal stop pin at? In any case, there it is. Um, there's the 3 8 There's my torque wrench. These screws are really, really long because they go through the presentation side. They go through the presentation side here and they go all the way to the back. See, they screw in to the titanium frame back here. So there is not like another screw that goes through here or there's not like a little spacer where a screw comes through from both sides into a threaded spacer or anything. Nothing like that. 
this spacer is, you know, is not threaded or anything. This just goes through like that. So you see what I'm saying? Lanyard hole, make note. Comfortable in the hand? No, I'm going to inundate you with even more of these damn things. Okay, I already showed you the initial. Next. And I showed you the initial of this. And you can see the, the cutout here on this side for where that assist spring and everything goes needs to go this here the whole kit and caboodle in any case um twins yes they are but yeah there's i mean uh, I don't think this is a good idea to de-assist de this. So if they, since they're assisted, you leave it alone. Uh, I talked to a buddy of mine that de-assisted one of his Kershaw knives. Um, no, maybe one of his ZT knives. It might have been the 770 or something. And it's like, nah, it was. It really w didn't work well. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, you could try it if you want. I, I just don't think it's a great idea. And you know what? It's okay. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And it's not broke. I just wanted to lay both these out so you could see what the uh, the 303 looks like. And basically, it's the same thing as the 301. Just with the black scale. But grippy. Nice blade. Pretty thick. Four millimeters, basically. Executed very well. I mean, they're, I mean, it's centered up and, uh, yeah, no problems here. No lock rock. And of course, no blade play. I mean, I put it back together, right? So, I mean, if you do that, shouldn't be a problem. Made well, put together well, fit and finish seems pretty good. That, that, you know, assisted opening, so you can only kind of push it back so far, and then you got to bring it the rest of the way. But, I mean, one thing for sure, you don't have to worry about any kind of flip or fail or anything like that. I mean, as soon as that goes, it's gone. It's done. So, it deploys very, very well. And you'll notice that they're using that. They're using the whole handle length here i mean when you figure almost from at this point from the tip to here right up against that flipper tab is about four inches now it's not it's more like three and three quarter cutting edge but i mean back to here is about four inches you're having to put that all in a package of a knife that's eight and a half. I mean, you've seen four inch blades go into a knife that might be nine inches overall. So this is eight and a half. So you're, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty efficient use of this, of the handle. So pretty good deal there. I mean, they're just bad boys, aren't they? They are just bad boys. A lot of machining in here, you know, on this titanium. Not cheap to make. And if you looked at the uh, if you looked at the pictures and noted the uh, hardened steel insert in here, so detent ball as well. So there you go. But these steel liners, nah, they're not skeletonized. They are solid. Yes, they are. Old school. They're old school. Now let's weigh them. Let's have a weigh off. Let's find out really how much difference there might be between one and the other. Shouldn't be any, right? 8.3. So what did Blade HQ say? What did they say? They said nine, in, nine ounces, right? That's 8.3. So, I mean, I knew that. Come here. We're making a big damn mess. Okay, so here's the green one. 8.25 ounces. Okay, this is killing me. I gotta get the... Let me get the... Let me get the black one back. 
because that was killing me. Okay, here we go. Here's the black one. Nine ounces, right? And somehow, the green one is only 8.25. Okay? So, the, it's 8.3 ounces on the, on the black one. Check this. There you go. Yeah. Well, at least they got one of them right when they listed it. But this one, I don't know where they got the nine ounces on there. Wow. Okay. Any case, now we got a huge paper mess all over my desk. Both sharp. Both a lot of fun. Big boy. Bad. Bad boys. A little, you know, they're very tactical, obviously. Which, uh, you know, is the knife industry doing a lot of tactical stuff? Yeah, I guess so. It just depends on what you define as tactical. You know, I mean, you still got case knives. You still got buck knives. You still got a lot of, a lot of brands of knives that are not tactical out there. So, I don't know. I think, you know, there's just a lot of interest and there's a lot of a market for that. Uh, this may be a passing phase that in 20 or 30 years may rotate back around to more traditional styles. Who knows? But for right now, hey, we're having a great tactical phase and it's a lot of fun. A lot of good action on these knives. This is kind of some old school stuff, but isn't that great? Of course, I got this one rearranged to tip up. But, I mean, you got all the options. Tip up, tip down. A lot, uh, lot of traction on these. And, you know, it's comfortable. You've got this front choil here. Your finger fits in. And then you've got this palm swell coming back to where the rest of your fingers can lay on there comfortably. Reverse grip, that's comfortable as well. Really well done, good design, feels comfortable in the hand, especially if you're, you know, um, this is a tough, this can be really a tough, heavy work knife, although you think, you know, almost 300 bucks, wow. Uh, how hard are you gonna work a knife like this or is it gonna be a lot of proud carry, but maybe proud, but badass proud, right? Bad boy proud, big, tough, heavy, you know, 8.2, 8.3 ounces. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. But, you know, it doesn't bother me. Uh, it just depends on the situation. And, you know, if you're just, you know, wearing something, you know, it's hot in the summer, you're just wearing some really light basketball shorts or something. No, you're not going to, you're not going to take this. Now you're not going to take this, but there's a lot of light carry knives available, so that's not an issue. This is for more, you know, uh, being out and about, whether you're going out camping or hunting, heavy usage, wearing jeans, you know, big, casual, not dressy type thing, but cool knives, nevertheless. Identical, Onion Strider, co-design, collaborative with ZT. I'm glad they're back. I really am. I'm glad I got an opportunity to, to get one without, you know, paying the pipe or the big, big money. It'd be nice if ZT would bring some of these back, uh, some of their other ones that they've done in the past back as well. There'd be a few I'd be interested in and definitely redesigning and offering out like the triple seven or triple eight in some kind of iteration would be really nice too. some of the, you know, even the triple nine, that kind of thing. I know, but still, I mean, it's just sad that, you know, uh, it takes so much money and it's such a limited number of, of knives, of units to go out in that marketplace. It just makes it ridiculous, especially when, it's an award-winning design, you know, and it's crazy. But, you know, you can see here that this is a good-sized knife. 
It's bigger than the Manix. It's, I mean, you know, Manix is like eight inches overall. So it's, it's bigger. It's not a lot bigger, obviously, about a half inch overall bigger. So if you really look at it, you know, it's not gigantic. It's not a nine inch knife, but it's a chunk of change. I mean, it's a heavy ass chunk of change. It really is. Where's, where's the... Uh, Hollywood, get out here. So this kind of thing. You know, there's your spider copara. See? I mean, a lot of handle on this dog. A lot of handle. Okay? So, swap them around. Aspect ratio, though. Now who looks smaller? So, yeah. This is pretty tall. This is a pretty tall blade. If you want to... Uh, Mm. Let me give you a like here. Eh, inch, not quite an inch and a half. Although once you got it buried in here, if you want to go from this area to the top of the flipper tab, how much you got going on there? Almost two inches, right at two inch even. So, yeah. That's some height. A lot of knives are inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And that's 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 pretty tall. It's a lot of real estate in your pocket. And it's a lot of weight too. But you know, these are these are these wonderful heavy duty combat type knives. Love the design. Love the way they executed them. So I'm all good with it. It's just a matter of taste. And I like the taste. I really do. Thank you so much for joining me. Love Them Knives channel. Subscribe if you'd like. Stay up on our giveaways and our table sales. They're always good. Follow me on Instagram because you know what we do around here. We love them knives, so stay sharp. Three.